Hello everyone and thanks so much for joining us for Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy. Up first, our hazardous weather graphic uh, showing a couple of yellow areas in the forecast zones. Wind advisory out for the uh, Alaska Range and that's uh, for areas west of Mentasta, which is over in that area. And that's out through tonight until 4 a.m. Tuesday morning. And that's uh, for wind gusting, wind gusts from the south to 50 miles per hour. Seeing some of that going on mostly in the uh, lee side of the Isabel Pass area or on the north side of the range there in Isabel Pass, seeing gusts uh, upwards of 50 miles an hour this afternoon. And uh, that'll continue uh, again through tonight. And areas around Delta, not seeing that much wind, but temperatures in the lower 70s this afternoon. So nice day in some areas over the eastern interior. And the other uh, advisory zone is for flood advisory there for the greater Cordova area. And that includes the uh, Eak River and uh, Lake, as well as other small streams in the Copper River Delta. That's out until 5 p.m. Tuesday afternoon as another four to six inches of rain is expected to fall across that area. And on to fire danger. And there, uh, one area of high fire danger, actually in a small area bordering on extreme, is on the north side of Isabel Pass there, where the winds are blowing temperatures uh, into the up near 70 or in the lower 70s. So a small area there of high fire danger. The other area there, right in the Healy area, uh, a little bit smaller there, but still about the same. And uh, that's on, again on the north side of the Alaska Range there in and around Healy. Otherwise, uh, Nowhere else even comes close to having a high fire danger. So moving on to satellite imagery, you can see the uh, south to north flow of clouds and moisture continuing to stream northward into southern Alaska, bringing the rain, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, on up uh, to the north to the Alaska Range and along the North Gulf Coast today. And uh, some of that moisture spreading into the northern panhandle, that mostly in the form of mid and high level clouds. And uh, let's see, let's bounce back to, there we go. That's mostly in the form of mid and high level clouds there. And then partly mostly sunny skies in the central part of the southeast coast to sunshine down south, temperatures in the upper 70s to lower 80s there. And then uh, still cloudy and unsettled with some areas of showers and rain back to the southwest coast and uh, in toward Kodiak Island, but another disturbance down here. That's gonna be coming northward, and that'll help to uh, redevelop this frontal boundary a little bit farther to the west and bring that next shot of uh, heavy rain into the North Gulf Coast tonight into tomorrow. And again, that's uh, expecting another four to six inches to fall. And then out here to the west, a uh, weakening frontal boundary pushing in across the Perbilof Islands. You can see starting out looks a little better, but really, beginning to thin out, uh, this area becoming stationary, this one sliding eastward across eastern Aleutians. Now bringing a little bit of uh, rain and fog, definitely cloudy skies there from Alaska up to St. George and St. Paul. A little bit of a break uh, precipitation wise, not so much clearing wise, and then the next batch of moisture coming into the western Bering Sea down toward Chimney and the western Aleutians. And rolling that through again, you can see how, how this uh, front is continuing to weaken. This next disturbance coming northward and then more moisture associated with the main low center, kind of another trough rotating around the bottom side, south side of that low, uh, bringing uh, breezy showery conditions in to the western Aleutians. Main front though, just a narrow band of uh, light rain and fog and not much in the way of uh, windy conditions, although had some uh, wind gusts like 25 miles an hour there at uh, Atka Island, also at Cape Newenham. Otherwise, that's about it. And then this uh, rain along the frontal boundary there, keeping it wet over south central Alaska today and uh, the Kenai Peninsula in toward Cordova. And then a narrow band of precipitation up the east side. They're really uh, hit and miss as far as 
any shower or any light rain goes. Lots of clouds, but uh, temperatures rising in the lower 70s, some uh, areas north of the Alaska range. As I mentioned, 72 at Delta with Eagle hitting 73 today. Even warmer down over the southern southeast coast, Shelter Cove, 83 degrees this afternoon at 3 p.m., while uh, places like Annette, 75, Kluwak, about 75 as well. And you know, even into the lower 70s, in spite of the uh, cloudiness rolling into the northern areas there. And for tonight, we'll see that uh, front kind of redevelops back to the west a little bit as that wave rolls northward, uh, pulling it back, and that'll pull another surge of moisture for rain heavy at times, uh, Prince William Sound over toward Cordova. And uh, some of that getting in Yakutat, could see another half inch of rain. And then uh, actually some moisture may spread north of the Alaska range along this uh, boundary here, mainly from the White Mountains northward, not so much on the immediate lee side of the Alaska range, but uh, more to the north there and possibly reaching the southern upper Yukon Valley. And then upper level troughing in the surface low, wet conditions, periods of rain all the way across from northern Cook Inlet back into the southwest interior into Bristol Bay. Another trough will bring another round of showers into Kodiak, but nothing very heavy. Dry, basically. Norton Sound, uh, the Seward Peninsula area, St. Lawrence Island, areas of clouds and fog, and just some fog patches and drizzle areas up there for the north slope in the Arctic coast. And this front continues to weaken, but keeps a narrow band of rainfall uh, going here, mostly from now on Alaska. Some of that will spread into the Alaska Peninsula. Falls past King Cove, uh, Cold Bay to a lesser extent. Again, wind's not a even a factor with that. A little windier though out west with more showers, especially numerous showers, areas of rain coming in with that trough rotating around that 987 millibar low. Otherwise, look for the clouds uh, probably to increase here to some extent over the southern panhandle. And for tomorrow, that front begins to push eastward now, getting ra heavier rain into the northern southeast coast and definitely cooler temperatures across all areas, uh, probably a good 10 degrees of cooling even over the southern zones, definitely over the northern areas. I saw the lower 70s today, it could be like 10 to 15 degrees of cooling with uh, definitely moderate amounts of rain showing up, say from Sitka, rain possibly all the way down to Klawak and uh, lesser of that off to the southeast as that high pressure area finally gives way. Moderate amounts of rain for Yakutat, lighter now with showers, uh, maybe some clearing over Prince, uh, over Prince William Sound and South Central Alaska. Risk of a thunderstorm over the Talkeetna is also a risk of a thunderstorm back to the southwest here over the Yukon Delta or the southern Kuskokwim Mountain areas. Periods of rain, central interior from around the uh, Tanana area, or actually in the Lotto Hills, eastward in toward the Fairbanks area. And then it gets uh, drier there with uh, less chances of rain over the 40-mile uh, country with a band of rain lifting up toward the White Mountains. Maybe some sunshine in the afternoon on the North Slope and pretty dry, but east winds gusting maybe as high as 25, 30 miles an hour right along the eastern Arctic coast. Next uh, system develops, another frontal boundary pushes northeastward and eastward, bringing uh, warm front rains into the Alaska Peninsula, increasing rain late tomorrow for the prayer blast, probably holding off till tomorrow evening, windy and wet, behind that uh, front uh, for the Western Aleutians. And for Wednesday, that system pushes eastward and northeastward, bringing more rain into the southwest coast and uh, western Bristol Bay, as well as the Alaska Peninsula. will probably rain all day. This rain will reach the coast in the afternoon. That original front uh, weakens it's considerably and pushes inland. Chance of some light rain into the Cuscombe Valley, maybe a few showers for Kodiak. This trough uh, promises showers and isolated thunderstorms for the central interior, partly mostly sunny for areas to the north, drier over south central Alaska, risk of a thunderstorm for the Talkeetnas, areas of the Copper River Basin, and showers, partly mostly cloudy, actually with numerous showers across the panhandle. And for uh, lows down there tonight, after the warm day today, mid 50s and lower 50s to the north, and upper 40s to mid 50s for much of interior Alaska. Brooks Range northward, you're in the 40s to the mid 30s to lower 30s along the Arctic coast. Highs for tomorrow into the 60s here for the Northwest Valleys. Cooler, 60, 65 now over the central eastern interior. And uh, maybe still reaching 70 possibly there over the southern southeast coast and uh, lower 60s to the north. Lower 60s for Bristol Bay and uh, on Alaska, 50s for the remainder of the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. And for the lows on Wednesday morning, 
Uh, lower to mid 30s now, kind of uh, cooling up here to the north, coming into the Brooks Range, lower 40s, upper Yukon Valley. Uh, upper 40s for the Tanana Valley, lower 50s back out to the west, then back down to the 40s and 50s, southwest interior. Highs, uh, 60s, lower to mid there for the Panhandle and also for the Susitna Valley. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Looking at flying weather for tomorrow morning, we've got uh, IFR there from about Wainwright on the Arctic coast, eastward toward uh, Kaktovik and Demarcation Point, IFR building here along the southeast coast, seeing VFR, central southern area, starting to see even marginal VFR work into Lynn Canal Glacier Bay. IFR up along the north Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, uh, western Alaska Range, southwest mountains here, Kodiak on down along and south of the Alaska Peninsula, a band uh, kind of broken up here off the southwest coast. VFR for the Yukon Delta, Norton Sound, and up into the upper Yukon Valley and most of the uh, upper Tanana. And then for the afternoon, uh, mostly VFR here for the upper Tanana and 40 mile country, a uh, band of marginal VFR central interior, better conditions on the eastern Arctic coast, a narrow band of IFR right along the southeast coast here. And again, marginal VFR in the increase there for the uh, northern panhandle. And a big area of IFR out here over the central Bering Sea, extending southward to the eastern and central Aleutian areas. And then for Wednesday morning, uh, pretty widespread IFR back in over the north slope right to the Brooks Range, on out to the uh, central eastern Arctic coast. VFR there from Point Lay to Cape Point Hope, and then down across the Noatak Valley, and then gets a little marginal here. A lot of marginal VFR now over the central eastern interior with some IFR over the mountainous terrain. A lot of IFR now in across the southeast coast, uh, big change, high pressure retreating, and marginal over the Gulf of Alaska, IFR, much of the uh, eastern and southern Copper River Basin into northern Prince William Sound along the western Alaska Range. And then for the afternoon, uh, marginal VFR covering most of the panhandle, except possibly for Heidelberg and uh, Ned Island. IFR, though, over toward the border, some lingering IFR up along the eastern North Gulf Coast. Uh, bringing out the VFR here, looks like uh, Fognac Island, up across Kamishak and uh, Kachemak Bay area, Homer, Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet, even into the southern Susitna Valley, uh, up the valley, northern valley, on into the uh, central eastern interior. Looks like a lot of marginal VFR. And the central north slope, same thing, marginal. Some VFR out here to the northwest southwest coast on out to the Bering Sea, marginal VFR to occasionally IFR. And for the passes, Anatovic VFR to start becoming marginal VFR, but it uh, looks like Attigan will just be marginal VFR for the entire day. And Lake Clark and Merrill, occasionally IFR, occasional IFR, both passes either approach, uh, could be some possible improvement in the afternoon, maybe. And that's more likely, though, for rainy, starting out IFR, gradually improving to marginal VFR into and during the latter part of the afternoon. Windy, marginal VFR. Isabel, IFR. Mentasta, look for a downward trend in conditions, uh, becoming marginal VFR, uh, certainly by the lat mid or latter part of the afternoon. And for Tanita, IFR with uh, Portage, same forecast IFR. Could start seeing some improvement here on the eastern entrance as the flow becomes, uh, starts to become more westerly, and that would uh, tend to lower it a little bit on the west side. And for Chilkoot and White, uh, VFR uh, to start, and then deteriorating to IFR late in the afternoon or toward evening. And for the freezing levels, 12 to 14,000 feet here over the southeast coast, with that upper level ridge starting to retreat. Uh, cooler air back out to the west, on up to the northwest, 8,000 feet down across Kodiak Island, otherwise 12 to 10 to 12 over the eastern interior areas. And I seeing uh, that southerly flow uh, beginning will turn more westerly or west southwesterly in the afternoon. Now push that band off to the northeast. So areas of uh, terrain enhanced, uh, widespread, considerable, moderate rime icing. Uh, very likely here for the eastern North Gulf Coast and the Coast Range and also along the Alaska Range, maybe even up farther to the northwest. Narrow band of icing here right along the southwest coast, the Alaska Peninsula, St. Lawrence Island. Areas of uh, less significant icing out to the west. And for the uh, jet stream here, upper level ridge you can see by tomorrow afternoon, getting pushed off to the east. This jet cutting up into the uh, panhandle at about 90 knots, upper level low 
coming in over the southern Alaska area here, and that's going to keep it uh, cool and definitely unsettled. And 100 knot jet out over the Aleutians, 9,000 feet southwest, 50 knots into the northern panhandle and southerlies, 25 to 30 there from the north Gulf Coast across the Copper River Basin. Lighter winds more easterly up to the north, next system out to the west, pretty strong winds. And uh, with that, some turbulence uh, on the moderate side. And after the break, I'll be back in the Marine Forest. It used to be that you could only warn one person about a tornado after it had already blown down someone else's barn. Now, on average, we're able to issue a tornado warning 15 minutes before the tornado's even there, and that wouldn't be happening without Doppler radar. This next rad system has reduced fatalities on the order of 45% due to tornadoes since its advent. We have a lot more information now about storms and being able to understand how they develop, how they produce severe weather, and how that information might be used to improve warnings for our National Weather Service partners. The lab is unique in that we serve the nation by supporting the National Weather Service in its mission to protect lives and safe property by improving the accuracy and the lead time of severe weather warnings. We have a legacy of radar research and converting existing technology from military to weather purposes. A recycled Doppler radar led to the development of NEXRAD, installed nationwide in the early 90s. It allowed forecasters to see storms like never before. Not only did we help bring that technology to the National Weather Service and to help protect lives and property, but we have continued to upgrade that technology, keep it relevant, and keep it state of the art. Recently, a major upgrade was added. Dual polarization technology takes the radar from 2D to 3D. Forecasters now know more about what type of precipitation is falling which is very helpful during winter storms, as well as how much rain is accumulating, resulting in better flash flood warnings. The radar can also detect and track tornadoes based on debris. Looking to the future, the National Severe Storms Lab is testing the capabilities of phased array radar. Originally used by the U.S. Navy, the antenna scans the skies electronically rather than mechanically, allowing the radar to focus on a storm. With current technology, we get a full picture or image of what is going on within a storm every four to five minutes. So it's more like a snapshot. Whereas with phased array radar, we get that picture of what's going on in the storm every minute. So it becomes more like watching a movie. So we can do adaptive, rapid scanning on the storms that matter most, being able to provide the information that's most relevant when and where it's happening. Another advantage of phased array radar is its multifunction capability, providing weather and air traffic information simultaneously. Number one, it is a system that promises to replace and expand upon the existing weather surveillance radars. Secondly, to replace aging air traffic surveillance radars. And number three, it offers a potential application to meet Department of Homeland Security and Defense requirements for identifying and tracking non-cooperative aircraft. With the replacement of all these various radars with a single system, the American taxpayer could realize substantial savings in cost. You have a lot fewer radars to maintain and the electronic capability of this also reduces maintenance costs because you do not have moving parts. Not too long ago, the ability to predict severe weather was thought to be impossible. During the past several decades, research conducted at the National Severe Storms Lab has developed life-saving tools like Doppler radar. We've progressed from no warning of threatening weather to about a 15-minute lead time 
and current research promises to extend that much further. Our knowledge of severe storms and how they behave and our use and ability to use the Doppler radar technology and is, is in a lot of cases a direct result of that close working relationship, that research to operations component that we get between the National Severe Storms Laboratory and a forecast office. That history and understanding of how these data can be used by our users and doing the research to help advance the use of radar technology. Really, it's what we live for. It's in our lifeblood. It's in our history. It's now easier than ever to be a part of Weather Research. We just launched the mPing app for both iPhone and Android users, and it's totally free. Ping, which stands for Precipitation Identification Near the Ground, is a research project by the NOAA National Severe Storms Lab and the University of Oklahoma. With the mobile app, you can send us your weather observations on the go. Are snowflakes falling on your head? Is hail hitting your car? Just select what type of precipitation is falling and press submit. It's that easy. It takes about five seconds and it's anonymous. Reports can then be viewed online. Our scientists will compare your report with what the radar has detected. This helps us develop new radar technologies and techniques. Download the app today, share your reports, and let's work together to make our nation weather ready. Learn more here and follow us. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Today's sea ice analysis still showing this uh, area of heavier ice up here to the north. Uh, gradually thinning out, but still hanging in close to the uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast there. And about the same uh, pattern here of a slow thaw expected for the next five or six days. On to the uh, coastal water forecast, south winds 15 to 20 on the south coast, sees 8 feet, and southwest 25, 9 to 10 foot seas on the north coast, and 40 knot gale force gusts expected out of the south tomorrow for Lynn Canal, otherwise Stevens Passage, southeast at 15, and southwest at 10, down at Clarence Strait with just 2 foot seas. Northwest 15, three foot seas in store for Clarence Strait on Wednesday. Otherwise, the south coast westerlies 15 to 20, and west 15 on the north coast, Lynn Canal south 20, losing those gale force gusts. Prince William Sound south 15 tomorrow, north to Gulf Coast, southwest 20 knots, but those eight foot seas there, including the Barren Islands, that keeps small craft advisories going in those zones, and southwest 20 for Kamishak Bay. And for Cook Inlet, south of the Foreland, southwest 25, small craft advisories, six foot seas, north of the Foreland, south of 20. And then for uh, Wednesday, southwest 15 here for the inlet north of the Forelands, and south 20 for southern Cook Inlet, westerlies, 20 knots for, uh, from Kamishak Bay across the Barrens into the western North Gulf Coast, the east side here, southwest 15, light west winds for Prince William Sound. Kodiak Island, southwest 25, Shelikoff Strait, otherwise uh, 15 knot winds on the east side, west 15 here for the Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula and the Bering Sea side, southwest 20, Bristol Bay, southwest 15 with three foot seas. And Wednesday, south 15 there for Bristol Bay and from uh, the uh, Bering Sea side of the peninsula, see some small craft advisories southwest south at 25 and from Cape Sarachev to Sitkanak up the east side of Kodiak Island and through Shelikoff Strait, winds southwest 20 knots, seas running 5 to 8 feet. Fox Islands tomorrow south to southwest 20 to 30 knots, about sums it up, 7 to 9 foot seas, south 30 knots. Uh, for the central Aleutians, Adak and Atka with uh, 10 to 12 foot seas, southwest 30 all the way out to Shimia with uh, seas up to 14. 
And then for Wednesday, coming down a little bit, 25 knots from the west-southwest out here in southwest 25 for the central Aleutians, Fox Islands. Pretty uniform pattern there, southwest at 20, and those seas running 8 to 9 feet. Along the southwest coast tomorrow, kind of a variable direction to southwest at 10, south of Nunavik Island, north side, southeast at 15, southeast 20 for St. Matthew Island, and the Pribla a little windier, south 25 with uh, seven foot seas, east 20 for St. Lawrence Island. Wednesday's outlook, uh, still light winds there for Norton Sound out of the southwest, east 20 for St. Lawrence Island, southeast 20 north of Nunavik Island, uh, coming around to the south at 20 for both uh, the uh, southwest coast here, south of the island, west of Cuscombe Bay, south 20 for the Perloffs. Up along the uh, Beaufort Sea coast, uh, real uniform wind pattern tomorrow, got brisk wind advisories in the east and then small craft advisories for the central coast west there down to Cape Beaufort all east 25 knots 5 to 7 foot seas Cape uh, Beaufort to Cape Thompson east to 20 and then light northeast winds for the Chukchi Sea outlook for Wednesday north 15 there for the Chukchi Sea and then uh, Cape Thompson uh, on got small craft advisories there up to 30 knots on the west side back down to 20 on the central coast, and then those brisk wind advisories continue there for the eastern stretch of the coastline through Wednesday. For tonight, uh, we've got another wave moving northward. They'll bring another surge of moisture in. Flood advisory out for Cord Cordova till 5 p.m. tomorrow due to uh, four to six inches of rain that this uh, kind of redeveloped frontal boundary will bring to the northeastern North Gulf Coast. And rain across southern Alaska, becoming more showery later on here, south central Alaska. Another weak trough, showers for Kodiak, and fair for the Panhandle, mild overnight lows in the mid 50s. Weak front, chance of rain for the Alaska Peninsula. And then for Tuesday, front finally pushes eastward as the upper level ridge starts to collapse and uh, give way. So moderate amounts of rain will push into the northern Panhandle, Yakutat, but not quite as heavy as we saw on the North Gulf Coast and rain over the interior, drier to the north. Next front brings rain to the southwest coast Wednesday afternoon, a wet day Wednesday for the Alaska Peninsula, showers and breezy for the Aleutians, and showers and thunderstorms along that trough in the central interior with uh, numerous showers over the Panhandle. Thank you for joining us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>